So what I've, what I've got here basically is an outline and plan of where the painting's going to go. So I've painted in red so it's kind of not going to mix up too badly with everything else when we put the greens on. And um, I'm using two pieces of reference, one darker, one lighter. So one slightly underexposed, one slightly overexposed. When I'm using photos I find it easier to have a, a kind of version of both. Because otherwise you'll use one where you lose information in the highlights or one where you lose information in the shadows. So here I've got both which cover it. If obviously I'm working from sketches or out in the field, it's a whole different ball game. But for this, um, this is where we're going to start. So I put in a, an outline where we're roughly starting and now I'm going to start blocking some areas. I usually put in the darks pretty early. I like to use strong, strong darks. Now, good darks can be tricky to find with pastels, but uh, there are a few manufacturers um, who are producing some very nice darks now. And it stops your pastels from getting too, too pasty and kind of uh, flowery looking. You want them to be some strong contrast. So where I'm putting in some darks, it's usually in areas like we've got these hedges, which uh, we'll squeeze those in. And then we've got some information going through there. And it's just drawing really. I'm putting in marks, I'm looking for the shapes, looking for the tones, and looking to see what we can uh, use as a guide for mark making. I apologize for the seagulls in the background. But they're, they're a bit lively today and uh, it's a warm day in Newlyn here in Cornwall so I do have to have the window open a little bit. So, so I'm using it's a very dark blue, so a very good intense colour and it's allowing me to put in some of the marks that I want to put in to describe some of the bigger areas. It's uh, an interesting set at this stage of painting you can really just do whatever you go as wild or as crazy as you want uh, it's not until you get further into the painting that you begin to have a commitment to it which demands that you pay a bit more attention here at the stage you're just whacking in some big shapes now i'm going to keep the marks in the foreground very loose because i tend to use this kind of area as my Kind of focus there on a landscape like this and to lead the eye in i will keep the marks at the front quite loose and quite abstract now being left-handed i'm kind of leaning across it with a bit of unusual angle always a problem even when i'm doing demos at workshops or anything because i'm always in the way but i'm trying to keep out of your way and so you can see what's going on hopefully you can see unless you can see which is indicating some of the the marks with some of the darker areas and there. So kind of putting that in, dragging some of these marks forward, and then we're gonna have a change. So we're gonna use a, a lighter colour. So I'm gonna go for like a cooler colour. There are some light bits but I want to put in quite early. Just indicate so the path. The path is kind of is a vital part of the painting. I want to get that in fairly early. And it picks up, it kind of comes through here, then it's lost in like a higher area, and then it's rediscovered in a looser, but a more abstract way, which is what I'm putting in there. So it seems to see it kind of leads us in. Don't worry if it goes a bit wrong at this stage. But the paper I'm using doesn't allow for underpainting. Uh, and it's been very rare for me to do an underpainting. I would always tend to be using um, a dry underpainting now rather than rather than an alcohol or watercolour underpainting. I'm pretty much stuck with this paper ball. I'm just putting the sun tone in the sky just to give us some idea of where we're heading for. I tend to use these bulldog clips. I find them a good way of working and all I always try and pick up some of the colors I use in other areas so you don't want colors in I don't want colors in isolation so I will there might be a bit of rock a bit of shadow or whatever but I'm just 
going to include some of the marks of whenever I use a colour there, I'll make sure those aspects are in here so that it, it runs runs through. Now I'm going to go in with some deeper, more shadow, heavier mass for this cloud. Where this, this thing will take me just allows for quite a good tonal range. So I'm going to put some in. Uh, although there's a lot of grains, I'm not going to use too many grains. The, the palette I've chosen today is, you'll see, if you can see it in the thing, it's pretty much geared towards portrait painting. Um, not too many grains. I've taken a few out, added a few in, um, but what I was really after was something a bit more, um, a bit less green and a little more interesting for me. I'm not a massive fan of I have a lot of green pastels, but they tend to just stay in the box off and not used as much because I want to tidy that path up already because it's kind of important to get that right. I do a lot of uh, landscapes where you're gonna, it's, it's a good thing to have a lead in line. So it's something like just that. Okay. So as you see, we're starting to get just a general feel. And now we're gonna pick up a few greens. Uh, and keep them dark, keep everything nice and dark at this stage. And just, there's great contrast in this painting between the, the foot horizon and the sky. It is quite dark. And I'm going to maintain that as much as I can. So it's a nice, I, I tend to work on the front chisel, which is on my studio. Mainly for that, my studio is in the attic. And uh, I find it easier to be able to use the size of the easel. And it does have a nice little bit of feedback, which from a video point of, point of view, when we did the tests for this, they were all oh, used up the mouse. Um, but I quite like the mouse. It's, it's like painting on, it's like you're painting on the, the canvas on there. You get that gentle feedback from the surface. Uh, so, unfortunately, we weren't able to eradicate that, but I'm sure you're all seeing some idea of what we're trying to do here. So, we've got in some masses, some darks, and we're going to start, I'm going to wipe my hands, if you'll excuse me for a moment. So what we're going to do now is start to work on the sky. Now it's the contrast between the sky and, and the foreground that's going to make the difference. So I, I really tend to avoid using white full stop if I can. Uh, but I do, there are certain colours that I will use, which I do like. Now, I'm just going to indicate a few to keep the drawing quite loose. Uh, and I'll just keep it moving through. And I'll keep tones kind of interesting. You don't want to go too heavy with your lights too early. You want to leave them, because if you put them on too much, what will happen is that you'll find it very difficult to darken without using. And the path is. So you see as the path cuts up through and then swings around to the right. Compositionally that, that for me works quite nicely. I'm just going to put in a few marks. As I said, keep repeating, keep pushing your other colours through the painting. I don't leave them all in one area and so I'm going to pop a bit, excuse me. So, we've got a few areas where we're just going to gently drag some blue through. Keep it moving. Oh, there we go, sorry, I'm in your way. And there's a nice, to the edge here, it kind of goes warm and then it just cools off. So I'm going to drag that across there as well. 
Now, to get some, start to use some of the greens. Um, that these are filled, so that inevitably there is. Um, you know, whenever I'm drawing one of these, I always try and draw the shape. It, we tempted all the time to try and draw a field. You look at the shape. It's like if you if you're looking at a bowl of fruit, if you're looking at an apple because you're going to eat the apple if you see it as an apple. If you're looking at it to paint it, then you see a sphere with reflected light. And it's a different experience. But as I said, this foreground area here, I want to keep it fairly loose. Fairly abstract. Because the big marks will lead you into the picture. It's the plan. We'll see by the end. So, putting in some marks there. Trying to link things together a bit, and it's starting to kind of make some kind of sense. Now, sky, I'm going to go back into that. I'm going to warm it up a bit. Uh, block in so. The nice thing with wood pastels is it's great for the opacity of, of the medium. It's very much like oil paint where you can put it down and it will cover. Uh, but the only thing you have to be careful of if you if you mix in too many lights too early and then try and re-darken, it'll pick up the light and you end up with this strange flowery effect which is not attractive. So we're just kind of putting in some marks to suggest areas where I'm going to be working it. Kind of a dirty colour up there, which is kind of like Right, so I put that there. And then I've kept the palette fairly limited um, in a way that's similar that I would if I was painting outside. This makes life easier when you're trying to choose a colour uh, and to use. And you think, mm, I don't know, is that, is that helping? That's not, I don't know. I want to keep my marks loose. The bigger the marks you can make, the more powerful the statement will be. So I'm starting to accentuate the movement of my marks. Now, just obviously as I said, I like to keep some, some of the marks, the colours mixed through. I don't like to see areas where it's just on its own. So I will pick up colours, move them around. You know, I think colour is the one thing that's intuitive. You, you just pick it up as you go. Tone, composition, drawing, these are all things that are relatively straightforward to learn because there's, there's a rule, there's a way of doing it, which is, is quite straightforward. And for that, I, I like to work this way. Um, but with colour, colour is very much you, you, you understand it or you don't. Uh, but we all understand it in different ways because we see colour slightly different. So we're going to come in with a pinky because like a glossy kind of effect. And this colour adds a lot, uh, it will break up the grain nicely. And that I like because it just kind of like cuts through. As you see the red, the underdrawing in the red is disappearing into into the painting as a whole. It's not causing a problem. Not yet. And it's quite a cool colour, so it does recede quite nicely. You see that recession in the painting, which I kind of like. And keep repeating these little ideas, those little colour ideas. When you like something, keep doing it, keep moving it, keep making it come alive. Now, I'm going to go in with a, a deeper plane because I need to accentuate another 
and uh, there's some areas where where we can you know, start to put it in and you can see it starts to do its thing painting is always it's always a risk whenever you start a painting it's always a worry in these situations when you're doing something to demonstrate and it starts to go wrong you know all these people watching and uh, but that's more than any painting technique you're gonna have issues but building up paint getting that contrast between sky and landscape landscape itself takes time and it's for me on this particular occasion I'm finding working okay, you know, we've got a bit of luck, a bit of luck working for us. So we're gonna start to put in some lights. I'm gonna draw negatively, um, not being there as in feeling negative, but um, as in we're looking for the shapes between things, or the shapes around shapes and how we can pick those up and just make them do what we want. I'm always looking for those mark making opportunities. I like to make marks. The painting is really about mark making and colour. I have to pay attention to it. Because I can kind of, I've got that lead kind of in there and it's kind of weaving through, which is kind of what I'm after. Always looking for opportunity to. No, because the skies are quite able to be, you can link through. The sky, there's always some reflection of what's going on in the sky. So I need to warm this horizon up. Um, it's going to be lighter, but at this stage, I want to keep it fairly. Fairly loose, um, fairly. You can kind of describe the flow of the painting through. You know, it's kind of. It's. I think pastel painting is very intuitive. You can pick up the colour if you use it. You don't think oh, much about it, maybe. That's with some mediums, because it's, the colours are just there. But that aspect is not something you need to worry about. But you do need to think how you can make it all come together. Uh, I'll be working in a, in a very visual way. Make the biggest marks you can, because big marks make exciting painting. Make little itsy witsy marks, they're not going to have the power. A large mark. A large mark is going to make much more of a difference in the end. So I like to incorporate some, as you can see, quite a lot of purples linking in. Big allows you more movement, so you're more drawing from the shoulder. I think yeah, your mark making is always more interesting if you're not. If you want to work very small, it's very difficult to maintain any kind of any kind of um, flow. And I think when you when you work with a bit more from the shoulder. Your marks would tend to be a little bit more exciting, and that's really what I'm looking for. I use blue as an alternative to green quite often. Same family of colours, and uh, and it makes for a bit, and it links through nicely in the picture. So you can see it's beginning. Yeah. 
concentrate on the band interest is in. So this guy's come in quite nicely. And we're gonna leak through here. So we're gonna draw some negative marks through here. We'll just pick it. Keep it. Keep it loose. Keep it. looks like it's a bit more random than it is. I don't think I've committed to quite a bit of painting at this stage. So making these marks wrong is going to be an issue. It's going to be a problem. And you need to think just a little bit before you put a mark down. So that you know the mark you're laying is what you want to do. Now, Oh, and I've got a bit of hand, so I'm going to leave that there. There's kind of grasses and everything growing here, so we want to accentuate them. I want to... Not too much light in the foreground, because the light really is happening up here. So... I'm keeping it a bit... Filling in the touches. Just, just. So it does kind of work. If you have to kind of use it, or you will use it. You know, you need to. So, we're kind of drawing more random negative shapes. I'm just trying to bring it together a bit. So, it's kind of just tone darker. And the light is touched through, and we'll make the light work. I like to keep the marks fairly, fairly bold. I don't want too much. Going on, I want it coming alive a bit. As well. You know, I want that, that light to work. So. Yeah, and I'm uh, relatively happy with where we're headed. So let's go back in with some dark. Always head back in with the dark. Uh, just. I'll lose that there. I'm just going to do that there. Stretching in the dark there. Yeah, that kind of works. That's redefining areas really. Get a little bit out of hand. It's a good way to work because it keeps you to do it. And you've got these quite strong crowd areas in front. You know? Should do that one, eh? It's a bad habit. Constantly cutting the guts up. Well, let's 
looking into makes and match, which are a bit more exciting. Bring that on a bit more. So you've got a dark area, and then you go in with the real dark. That helps to lift the painting out from itself a bit. Right and I like to accentuate. I see you certainly from working from a studio and um, for a photograph. See a photograph as a starting point. Don't see it as a ooh like that. But that will produce just a very boring painting. It's more of a structure than well, not the kind of painting that I'm after doing. I'm after. Looking for something a bit more. And I think, how are we doing? 